While some of you might think that the water in my glass is from the tap or perhaps a bottle, this glass is actually filled with rainwater I just collected on my back porch. <laughs> this simple act underscores a profound truth. Clean water, essential for all life, falls from the sky right where we need it for free. I know because I have a PhD in aquatic chemistry, and well, now I'm a CEO of a technology company. Perhaps, <laughs> yeah, that is perhaps not the most traditional career path, but it seems to be serving my lifelong mission to bring science to policy and decision makers to protect our water resources. It's not actually what we do on the water, it's what we do on the land. In the U.S., we, our relationship with the water is one of convenience and often very wasteful. That's particularly true for the water in my glass. We've designed our cities to treat rain as a waste product. But what if we embraced it? By changing this paradigm, communities can boost their resilience against one of the biggest challenges facing this generation, climate change. I mean, we're all accustomed to using water effortlessly for drinking and cleaning, flushing, bathing. The typical American household uses 300 gallons of clean water per day. That costs us less than three bucks. We're paying in a lot of other ways. The journey of our water is complex and totally unsustainable. Extracted from aquifers or reservoirs through purification to distribution, our potable water travels long distances, and that requires a significant amount of energy and resources. I mean, have you ever tried to carry a five-gallon bucket of water? Yep. <laughs> it's pretty heavy, right? Well, in California alone, that adds up to 20% of our annual energy consumption. It's literally pumping water around. Meanwhile, clean water, like what's in my glass, falls from the sky right where we need it, for free. You ever think about what happens to the rain when it falls in our cities? We have these blankets of impervious surfaces of roofs and driveways and pavement and asphalt, and it prevents rain from sinking into the ground, and it's transformed into urban stormwater runoff. Well, urban stormwater is literally the fastest growing source of water pollution in this country. If this was stormwater in my glass, there is no way I would drink it. So through a network of pipes and channels, and our plan is to now evacuate that polluted stormwater out of our cities as quickly as possible, away from where it could be beneficial, until we can't. Right? Y'all have seen the news. Too much flooding and destruction and safety issues are caused by short bursts of intense rainfalls, causing disasters that really we can't ignore any longer. Another growing challenge is water security. 90% of the U.S. fresh water supply is extracted from groundwater. And America is draining our groundwater aquifers as if there was no tomorrow. Overuse is threatening this vital fresh water supply nationwide. And it's a lot of rainwater that we're actually wasting. My team and I at Second Nature, we publish methods and develop digital tools to quantify and track the amount of runoff in cities. So for a second, visualize your local large box store, strip mall in Santa Cruz County. These sites have four to five times more water running off their properties than they consume in operations. And nationally, the total amount of runoff in U.S. cities is 20 trillion gallons per year. What you need to know is so that's the same amount of water that cities in the U.S. consume every year. 
clean water, falls from the sky, right where we need it, for free. So global climate change is a crisis of huge proportions. And local communities, well, I think they're kind of left holding the bag. But by changing our perspective, our value, and our approach to rainwater, cities can become proactive and adapt. We just need to embrace three simple practices. Capture and reuse. We collect rain and runoff, and we reuse it for non-potable and maybe even potable needs. Infiltrate and recharge. We poke holes in those blankets of pavement covering our cities, and we put water back into the ground where it belongs. And greening. Green stormwater infrastructure, nature-based solutions using regionally appropriate vegetation, trees, and plants. Honestly, the more greening, the better. So how? How do, we, how do we do this? Well, I think we start by challenging outdated perceptions, like it's lunacy that we flush our toilets with clean, potable water. We have science and geography and digital tools, like what my team at Second Nature develops, to inform local and regional strategies as to which of these practices are best implemented where, and defensively account for the environmental benefits of our investments. We dare to be innovative, and that starts with urban planners and developers who proactively put rainwater management and reuse in the center of their new and redevelopment designs. It's no longer an afterthought. And then local and state and federal agencies continue to leverage their existing regulations, but they develop attractive financial incentives to promote innovation and accelerate the investment by the private sector. Because we're going to need, <laughs> cities are going to need to implement solutions on public and private land at scale. And you do your part by implementing these practices to reduce the amount of runoff from your property. Maybe even striving to make it runoff neutral. And the benefits? Well, the benefits are interrelated and they collectively boost local resilience. We increase the security of our fresh water supplies because capturing and reusing rain and runoff is going to directly reduce the amount of clean potable water we pull from our taps. We strategically recharge the aquifers underlying our cities because we're crediting those who invest in putting water back in the ground. We reduce local flood risk because every drop that we capture or recharge well, that's less strain on your local, friendly, aging, undersized stormwater system. We protect water quality because filtering polluted stormwater through soils naturally purifies it. That's going to protect the health of our local waterways and result in a lot less dead fish. And we mitigate the deadliest impact of climate change excessive heat. Studies reveal staggering temperature disparities between affluent and underserved neighborhoods directly related to how green they are. Green stormwater infrastructure and nature-based solutions offer relief, reducing peak temperatures and energy demand. And then we use less energy because we're simply not pumping as much water all over the place anymore. Underserved communities bear the brunt of environmental injustice. Excessive heat, flooding, poor water quality. Right? Climate change is only exacerbating the equity gap. But by investing in rainwater solutions, we can immediately uplift our most vulnerable communities. Biologist Bill Mollison once said, although the problems of the world are increasingly complex, the solutions remain embarrassingly simple. So let's embrace the rain as the resource it truly is and better prepare ourselves and our communities for the rapidly changing climate. Thank you.
Thank you.